Hey everyone, uh, my name is Alex. I'm the owner of Billet Performance Manufacturing in Comox, BC, Canada. So, I'm going to go over a little bit today with how to wire your 2008 F350 with a 67 Cummins in it. I see a lot of videos online, guys doing swaps. Everyone seems to be able to get motors in. Everyone talks lots about getting the motors in. Um, plumbing it, everything else. Nobody really seems to do much with wiring. They kind of sort of skip over it and I don't know, it's not very helpful. I feel wiring is a big problem for a lot of people and it worries them so I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. Uh, what you see here is this is an engine wiring harness from a 2008 F350 with a 6.4 power stroke diesel. Um, it doesn't look like what you pull off the engine, but that's because I have removed everything out of this wiring harness that you won't need. Uh, I've left what's required to put this into the truck with the Cummins and make everything work. Because who wants a truck that doesn't have air conditioning and who wants a truck that doesn't have gauges? Uh, there's just too many trucks out there that don't have working AC and don't have working gauges and there's no reason for it. I do them all the time. Everything works. It's not that complicated. It just looks like a lot when you pull these giant wiring harnesses off these engines and out of these trucks and it just seems, it seems a bit daunting to people. So, here is what you actually need. If you take your 6.4 wiring harness and you find all of these connectors. Uh, camshaft position, crankshaft position, map sensor, that will make your factory boost gauge show your actual boost. The AC high pressure switch, this is mounted on one of the AC lines just to the passenger side of the truck. It's already terminated too. Like these wires, they come out of the harness, they're already terminated. You're not really having to do much for wiring here. Uh, what else do we have here? We have the coolant temperature sensor, the AC clutch, oil pressure, and alternator. And that's it. That's all you need. This connector connects the engine harness to the body harness right beside the engine control module and this is the connector to the engine control module. So once it's actually stripped down it doesn't look like a lot. As you can see there's some splices in here from the factory. This used to have five, six wires coming out of it. You can just cut this out. Put a, put a connector in here of some sort. Use like a butt connector if it's crimped nicely, a heat shrink butt connector. Or you could solder it. Whatever you want to do, whatever you're comfortable doing just take these out. If you don't want to take them out, they're fine. Just like this, tape them up, leave them in the harness. Uh, this wire here comes from this connector. It's uh, blue with a red trace. And that's a battery feed. So it's there, it's heavy, it's a high current feed. We're going to use that to power the Cummins ECM. And the other thing that people struggle with because they can't get their gauges to work, they can't get anything to work properly, even when they try and wire this, is this CAN bus. Um, when you remove the glow plug module out of these Ford trucks, it actually severs the CAN bus. And the CAN bus is the communication between all the different modules in your vehicle. So this blue with white and white wire feed into your glow plug module and then they feed back. And when you take this module out, it cuts them. So join this blue with white wire, back to this blue with white wire, this white wire, back to this white wire, and that'll put your CAN bus back together and make the modules communicate. Um, there is some wires removed from this connector. As you can see, there's two, three, four, five that I've removed. To remove those, you just pop this up. There's some small tabs down inside the connector. You just pull them away from the pin, slide the pin out.
connector. Same thing. Tons of wires removed from this. Take this red lock, slide it out. Once that slid right out, uh, you can just pull on these and they'll pop right out of the connector. Slide the lock back in to hold the wires that you do need. I'll post up some pictures with all the numbers of the pins and where they go, what you have to keep and what you can remove. Make it as easy as possible. I'll give you all the pin numbers here of all these connectors. Same with this connector. All the pin numbers, all the connectors. And makes it fairly simple. So that's that's all you need from the Ford wiring harness. I can't remember if I talked about this wire. Yeah, that's the battery feed to the Cummins engine controller. So pretty simple really. It it looks like a lot when you pull it out, but once you strip all the tape and take all these extra wires out of this harness, it's not a lot. Um, this alternator one is if you're just only if you're gonna use the Ford alternator. If you plan on using the Dodge alternator, the wiring is already on the engine for it, and you just plug it in and it'll work. So this is just if you want to use Ford. And these cam and crank sensors, these will run to whatever TAC kit you have. There's lots of TAC kits out there, you can whoever's you want to buy and use. That will be needed for those. And the rest are all fairly self-explanatory. They're just coolant temp, oil pressure. AC clutch, AC pressure switch, and that's that's it. That's that's your Ford harness. So if you can get to that point, you're halfway there. This is the Dodge harness. Well, that's not. That's out of the Ford harness. So. Side of the engine, you have your ECM. It has two connectors. Uh, this one's C1, this one is C2. This wire went into C2, so this connected the engine control module to the truck. Large black wire, ground. Super simple. That just goes to the ground somewhere on the engine block, wherever you want to run it. That's where it was from the factory. Uh, these two wires here are the grid heater. So these wires are the power, the, sorry, the positive and the negative to the coil in a relay to run the grid heater. You can do a little diagram, I'll show you how to wire that up. It's also super simple. Uh, this wire, this connector here, when you strip the Dodge harness down, this is gonna be just sort of hanging out here. Uh, it's it's power to the sensors on the engine, so you have to install a relay that triggers the ECM triggers the relay to turn these sensors on. It's not a big deal. It's super easy. I'll show you how to do that. I'll do a diagram and I'll put that up in the video at some point here. So we have. This is that relay output I was just talking about. This wire just goes right to here. This one here is the relay control. So that triggers the relay to turn power onto this wire. This brown wire turns on a fuel pump relay. So if you're running a FAS, this will turn on the FAS. If you're running some other sort of pump, this will trigger it. If you are using a 6.7 in a 6.4 truck, the 6.4 fuel pump is adequate to run the 6.7 engine. I don't know what sort of horsepower you can run it up to, but for any sort of stock application, 350, 400 horse, the Ford 6.4 fuel pump works great, and it functions properly. Uh, you hit the key, it'll cycle. Once it sees a tack signal, it'll run and do what it needs to. So you won't need this at all if you are using the Ford fuel pump. This gray, sorry, pink with gray wire right here, that's ignition feed. So that is the only ignition feed to this Cummins ECM. And easiest find, place to find that under the hood of the Ford truck is the vacuum pump on the driver's side fender. There's two wires in it. One's key on power 
and one is ground. So the key on power is a 10 amp circuit. This is no problem to run off that at all. This large wire is a battery feed to the Cummins ECM, and that goes to the blue with red wire in that Ford harness that we talked about. Now, the other wires that are essential to make this run are these six. So there's two sets of three twisted together. Uh, they all go to the app sensor or the throttle pedal. So you have to put a Dodge throttle pedal in the truck and these six wires run to it. I'm not going to list all these colors and pins, but I will put up diagrams of where they go and make it super simple. I'll tell you where they go on each end. These two here are your CAN bus, so that's communication to the ECM. So they get extended and go to a data link connector underneath the dash. These two wires and in the data link you'll also have power and ground. Again, another diagram I'll put up. These two go to the brake switch. These aren't required. They're only for cruise control and exhaust brake. So if you're not doing cruise control and exhaust brake, which gets quite a bit more involved, you don't need any of these other wires. This is Cummins bus. It's not used normally, but it's in there. I just leave it in there. It comes terminated in the Dodge harness. And these ones here, you can see, are just splices that I haven't removed yet, so that'll be fixed. And same with that one. This just goes back to itself there. That goes back to itself there. That'll be gone. So really, you have these six wires. To make this run, you have these six wires that go to the pedal. 12 volts to the red. Ignition to the pink, the pink with gray. And the relay control hooked up, and this relay wire. And that's that's it. That's it on the Cummins harness to make it actually run. There are some other wires here. If you're going to run an exhaust brake, that's exhaust brake switch, and this one here is exhaust brake light. Again, I know it's hard to see the pins, but I'll I'll give you a list of all these pins and where they go. These connectors are all numbered. Um, if you look at the bottom side of this connector, it'll you can see they're all numbered in rows of 10. So this is like pin 1, 10, 11, and so on, all the way through this connector. And I'll give you all the pinouts for all of this. Uh, that's basically it for the Cummins harness. This is the connector for the app sensor. So, like I said, that'll go on to these six wires here. Six to six. Dealt with. Uh, here's a generic relay. It, it's easy to get. It's available at like any auto parts store. So I'll show you how to wire this up as well. It actually has five pins. It, you only need four of them. But I'll uh, either put that in another in a diagram, or I'll might make another follow-up video to this once this harness is fully assembled and just go through it with you just so you can see how simple it actually is to build this harness to make the 6.7 run in your 08 Ford. Um, if you guys are into this, comment below. Uh, I can get, I can do other harnesses. I'm doing a 6 liter with a 20, 6 liter Ford with a 24 valve shortly here, so if you guys want to, I'll show you how to wire all that up. Um, also, with the 6 liter and the 6.4, there's a super cheap way to do the tack and make everything work. You don't have to buy a crazy tack kit. You don't need to put a tone ring on the front. You can buy a small uh, electronic box that makes the tack work just fine. And if you want, sorry, this is all for manual. If you want to do automatic, there are some other things that you have to add in here as well. So I'll put that in the diagram of what you need to add. And yeah, just comment below. Like, if you guys want some di some videos on wiring up standalone anything, um, if you have an LS you want done, or you have any sort of engine you want done, just comment, and uh, I can do a video on it. I can basically show you how to run any engine standalone. If you do want your ECM tuned, I can do it. Uh, just comment below, and you can contact me. 
I do tune the ECMs, I'll remove the security out of them and make them ready to go. So, yeah. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel here and I'll keep doing these. Thanks guys.